Welcome to the Daily Devotionals podcast with Pastor Paul Pett from Redeemer Lutheran Church. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome Redeemer family and everybody joining us on the internet around the world. Our devotion for today is based on our epistle reading for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. The epistle reading for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he made, he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended, far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is worked properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. As Paul writes this, he's talking about the church and he's talking about us as individual Christians. And he's talking about growth, but even more so living in the faith in a way that's pleasing to God. And that's why he says walk. And I want you to hear what he says right away in verse 1. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. You know, each and every one of us has a calling. It might be simple things like being a husband or a wife, being a child, a student, being a worker or a supervisor, being a teammate, a congregational member, or something else. We all have different callings. But once we were called to believe, our first calling became our faith relationship in Jesus Christ. We were called to believe in him called to be a walk as a believer. And so as we're called to that, then Paul begins to describe that walk of faith. He says, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. You know, that's what we're called to as we're called to believers, to be those things, to do those things, to live those things, to walk in that way. And then he describes that church. 
There is one body and one spirit, just as you are called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. See, we all need grace. God's undeserved kindness, his undeserved love, his undeserved gift of salvation. That is his grace. We all need it. We all lack it. We all can't achieve it on our own. We can only receive it as a gift from God, a gift from Christ. We hear about his ascension and his descending, but even more so, once we recognize he has come and he has ascended into the heavens to live and reign for all eternity, then we also recognize that by the power of the Holy Spirit, he keeps that church working. In verse 11, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip the saints to give us what we need, to give us the tools, the knowledge, the materials, the guidance, the direction, to give us those things, the equipping the saints for the work of ministry, for the body, building up of the body of Christ. So building it up means we're going to grow. We're reaching out to others. We're helping them to hear about Jesus Christ. We're calling them to come and believe with us. But we do this in a mature way. And that's where he says in verse 13, until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So we don't act like children is what he says. We're not distracted easily. You know, little children, you know, are distracted from one thing to another, play with a toy for a few moments, drop it and go play with another toy. And if some other child wants the first toy, we go back and we act like it's ours. All of that, all of that, tossed to and fro. But we do it with teachings and doctrines. And we can't do that not as mature Christians, not as those who follow Christ in the maturity of faith. And that's what he says uh, as he continues. So that we're no longer children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human coming, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. So we're growing, growing toward the maturity of our faith, growing toward the maturity of living for Christ, walking in Christ, doing it his way, following his pattern. Do we always get it right? No. Are we complete mature yet? No. Are we going to make mistakes? Yes. Are we going to make failures? Yes. But do we keep striving? Yes. Yes, for his sake. Yes, for his glory. Yes, for his purpose. Yes, for the furthering of his kingdom. Yes, to help others know, hear, see, and believe in him. Yes. That we may grow up into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined together by every joint and with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. We grow, we grow building ourselves up, building the church up, building our relationship with Christ up in love. In Jesus' name, amen. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to grow in our faith, grow in our maturity, grow in our walk of faith. Help us to recognize that we can't live without that uh, understanding, without walking in your way. So help us strive for that calling, to do that which is pleasing in your sight, to live for you, 
and to me mature in how we do so, living to grow in faith and to build up your church. In your name, amen. Have a blessed Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow for tomorrow, tomorrow's devotion. May the Lord walk with you and strengthen you to walk with him. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.